Hello there, people of the internet. How's everybody doing today? I'm doing all right, thanks for asking. Today is another video based off of a conversation that I had. In this particular case, it is with a viewer. Um, he was asking about specifically one of these kinds of rifles right here. This right here is one of your Spanish Mausers. These are very predominant in the gun world today. Not really all that desirable or collectible, but as a result, they are quite cheap rifles. And they're ones that you can pick up for not a lot of money, and uh, you can... What am I trying to say here? No one cares if they have a hard life or not, so you can use these as very effective hunting rifles, or truck guns, or whatever it is that you're using for them. Uh, this particular one, I do care if it gets scratched up or dinged up, because it is absolutely beautiful. It's got a very gorgeous tiger stripe stock on it but i have another one of these that i call old sketchy with just a sporterized beater stock and it's all rusty and pitted and that's one of the rifles i don't really care if i smash up but i had a viewer ask me about these spanish rifles in particularly and how you can tell what caliber it is that they are chambered in and i figured i'd go ahead and I'd make a whole video talking about how to tell what caliber your rifle is chambered in now the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to figure out what rifle it is that you actually have. If you don't know what rifle it is that you actually have, then odds are you're not going to be able to figure out what caliber it takes. So figure out what rifle it is that you actually have. After that, look on your rifle many, many times, especially if it's a, you know, a modern day firearm or one that's been imported, has to have import marks on it, somewhere on your firearm is likely going to say what caliber it is, or at least what firearm it is, so you can look it up and possibly determine what caliber it is. Now, many times, as is the case with this Oviedo Mauser, there are no markings on it whatsoever. I have serial numbers and that is it. There is literally no other markings on this thing. Besides, of course, the import marking, which we have up here on the barrel, uh, very, very difficult to read because it is worn out, who the hell knows. Uh, when it was stamped on here. I see Oviedo, Spain, M, that's probably 1916. Can't read the rest of it. I think it says Miami, Florida, somewhere in there. But that's it. <laughs> that's all I can read from that. Uh, many times if you get yourself like an old rifle or a rifle that has perhaps been converted to a different caliber or something like that, uh, the caliber is not going to be on it. Um, this isn't really a major issue in the gun community because a vast, vast majority of rifles have the caliber stamped right on the rifle somewhere, but like I said, there are some instances where the caliber is not on there. And this right here is a very good way to tell what caliber it is that yours actually takes. What you're going to do first of all is you're going to find out what firearm you actually have. This right here is going to narrow the different calibers that they used for that firearm. And in this particular case, if you didn't know that this was an Oviedo Spanish Mauser, you would just know that you had some sort of small ring Mauser and that greatly widens the different calibers that uh, you would take. But in my particular case, I know exactly what this is. And this might not be the most economic way to tell what caliber it is, but if you get yourself uh, the most common calibers that the rifle would normally be chambered in, you can do this. This is the bore test oftentimes used to determine whether or not the bore of a rifle is still good. I also use it to determine what caliber it is. This here is a seven millimeter uh, caliber or seven millimeter, it wouldn't be caliber, it's a 270. <laughs> it's a seven millimeter projectile. Um, this is the width or the size of projectile, not the size of the cartridge, but the size of the projectile that this rifle was originally chambered in before its 762 conversion. And as you can see, the bullet itself just gets absolutely sucked down into the muzzle and you can no longer see the projectile whenever it is sucked into the muzzle. And there's quite a lot of wiggle room in there, probably about half a millimeter, which makes sense considering the caliber that it now is. So this right here is no longer a seven millimeter since there is so much room in this barrel for this seven millimeter projectile that it just wobbles around in there. Now due to my research, I know that the Spanish converted many of their rifles to 7.62 millimeter or 7.62 set me. And this here is a 7.62 NATO round, which is the same diameter as a 7.62 set me. And it sits right where it's supposed to sit. You should have a little bit of tension at the uh, largest width area of the bullet to provide, you know, tension for the rifling and whatnot. But this right here is exactly 
what you want to see. This is the width. Well, this is the intended width of the projectile. If I were to smack this down into the barrel itself, it would go, but I'd have a tough time getting it out. Uh, you want a nice tight fit. If your bullet just drops in there and you know for a fact that it is the right caliber, then uh, that means that you have a very, very, very shot out bore and your rifle is going to be pretty inaccurate. But this right here is exactly what you want to see. You want to see just the fattest part of that bullet sticking out of the barrel. Um, this right here is not a surefire way to tell different cartridges, but if I were to take an 8mm round and shove it in there, it would very much not fit. It is definitely too wide by about half a millimeter. Now, like I said, this is not the end-all, be-all way of telling what caliber your rifle is in, but this right here is a very good indicator to at least point you in the right direction. If you have yourself a 7mm uh, Mauser and you know you're dropping 8mm Mauser round in there and it just does not fit properly, you know, into the into the bore right here and it just it, it sticks out like that far, that means the bullet's too fat and you gotta try something else that's smaller. It is a very good way to begin, I'm just gonna say begin to point you in the right direction of what caliber it is that your rifle is actually chambered in. Now there's many rifles out there that are of very unusual calibers. Like I said, you have to know what it is that you actually own and what it is that, uh, well, once you know what you actually have, then you know what caliber is to look for and you know at least a general ballpark of where it is that you're supposed to be. I don't have batteries in this thing, do I? Oh, I do, ha ha. My earmuffs do have batteries. I had to take the batteries out of these the other night, and I don't remember putting any back in, but apparently I did. Now I'm out here at the gun range with this 7.62 converted Spanish Oviedo Mauser with some NATO ammunition. Originally, this thing was converted to 7.62 set me because the Spanish were not aware if these rifles could handle the pressures of 7.62 NATO ammunition. However, various testing uh, on these rifles has proved that they are vastly strong enough to handle 7.62 NATO ammunition, which is why I fire so much of it out of this rifle. This rifle really is a pleasure to shoot. This right here might be one of my favorite rifles that I own, just because 7.62 NATO ammunition is less expensive than much of the other high, well, I was gonna say high-powered rifle ammunition, but I guess it's technically an intermediate caliber, but it is on the way high end of the intermediate caliber. But our military uses this ammunition and it's not very expensive, <laughs> so I can just sit out here and plink with this rifle. And it doesn't really destroy my budget all that much. Well, there goes, there goes that bowling pin. Let's hit it again, why not? Aha! You can see the smoke coming from the tracer round. We're firing tracer ammunition here. And I just think it's cool when you see smoke like that. This is surplus tracer ammunition though, so actually very little of it legitimately goes off, but whenever it does go off, it's fun to watch. And whenever it does, aha, I see some smoke over there too. Whenever it does go off, it's fun to uh, light things on fire with it. Many times I stick up like a can of spray paint or something and hit it with a tracer round. That's always fun to watch those explode. All right. Well, <laughs> I only brought five rounds of ammunition out with me. Uh, this wasn't really a shooting video, it was more so just a video of me telling you guys uh, how to figure out what caliber your rifle is. The biggest, easiest step is figuring out what rifle it is that you actually have. You should, at least if you bought it, you should have some general idea as to what the rifle is. So you should have some general idea as to the several calibers as to what it should be chambered in. If you don't know, then a quick internet search will tell you basically everything it is that you need to know about that rifle. And then from that, you know the different size projectiles that uh, the rifle might possibly be chambered in. So then you just have to check the chamber. Well, I guess in this particular case, check the bore here. While I'm playing with this rifle, I'll hold the bolt open too. Look for any smoke. Make sure there's no fire down there. If there is. It's not the end of the world. But I don't see any fire. Okay, that's a good. That's a good thing. But hopefully this helped point somebody in the right direction. Uh, I tried explaining to this through text in comments and it was just going to be easier to make a whole other video. So I figured I'd make a whole other video and tell people how to check the caliber of their rifles. Like I had said, it is not a definite, determined thing, but it, it, it will point you in the right direction if you manage to pull it off. Let's go ahead and take these off now that I'm done shooting. That was actually a very good time. As a matter of fact, I kind of want to shoot this rifle a little bit more. 
I might just have a range day with this gun. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Hopefully this did help. Subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked the video. Description down below has a bunch of links to all sorts of stuff. That being said, I think this is the end of this video. I kind of wish I brought out some more ammunition. I have a 270 around for what that's worth. I actually don't own a 270, but I have 270 ammunition. That's just one of the things that happens whenever you're a gun guy, I guess. You get ammunition for guns that you don't have. And this is what happens whenever you do YouTube videos. <laughs> you start rambling and going on tangents and whatnot. It's a way of life. Shout out to GOA, shout out to FPC, and you guys go off, have yourself a fantastic day, and thanks for watching. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.